Warren Rustand is an expert juggler when it comes to keeping his career and family thriving, that is. He served as President Gerald Ford's appointment secretary and cabinet secretary. He became a successful entrepreneur. And most importantly, along the way, Warren learned the art of how to be a good dad and a good grandpa. Warren joins us today. Welcome to Spirit 105.3. How are you? I'm just fantastic. Thank you. I'm having a wonderful experience. I love that. What does that mean? Well, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm at the U.S. PGA Open Golf Championships, and our son Eric is playing in it. So I'm here to support him. Wow. What does that feel like? Well, it feels fantastic. I'm excited for him. It was a career goal for him to get here to the U.S. Open Championship. The best golfers in the world are here, and he has a chance to prove himself. So as a father, what could be better than that? Congratulations. It would be really hard for me not to do, like, a full-blown clap and have to stick to that golf clap. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I have to be quiet. That's the hard part. Being quiet is the hard part. So have you gotten to the point where he coaches you on your swing rather than the other way around? Yeah, I never have tried to coach him on his swing. He was always better than I was from the time he was about four. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, I just I just enjoy his swing, and I play as well, but uh, not nearly as well as he does. Okay, yeah. that is extraordinary. So, Warren, what is the best thing you ever did for your kids as their dad? Well, obviously, the first one is just to love them, unconditionally mm. to love them, regardless of what they did or how they did it, the mistakes they've made, the failures, the great things that they've done. It's just so that they know that their dad or their mom, the parents are just always there to support them and love them. So I would think that's the most important thing. And then maybe the second thing is to, to give them exposure to lots of different things, not just sports, but travel, music museums, different kinds of people, people who look differently, think differently, act differently, all kinds of people to allow them to embrace the whole world, which is also very important, I think, for parents to do. Yeah. What are some little things that families can do this summer that could have a big impact? Oh, man, spend time together. You know, COVID has really been interesting because it's forced us to spend so much time together. And in that, I think we've really discovered and maybe rediscovered how much we enjoy each other. And yes, it, it's posed enormous challenges for many families, but I think we've rediscovered our personal relationships in many ways and the intimacy of those relationships. I think that's really healthy. So just time together and both quantity and quality of time become really important. And then the little things that we can do that make families really good, and that's show an interest in what the other person is doing and what they like to do and find things that we commonly like to do together that can be fun and exciting. And then try new and different things that maybe none of us have ever experienced, but to go ahead and try those new things. And in all of that, we discover the joy of living. We discover the happiness of being together. We discover the fun of our interpersonal relationships. And I think that's what COVID has forced us to do. And I think that's really helpful. That's beautiful. Boy, have I been waiting to ask you this question, Warren. How do you stay present with your family when you feel that pull back toward emails and texts? I think we have to have some boundaries, right? And we have to have some hard and fast rules about that. And we've allowed social media to slip slip into everything we do. Our technology is just ever present. And yet as parents and in families, I think we have to draw the line. For example, I don't turn on my cell phone until I leave for the office and I stop it at six o'clock in the evening. I never take phone calls at home. I never discuss business at home. When I walk through the doors, I have two jobs. One is to be a great husband and the other is to be a great father. And those are my jobs for the rest of the evening. And I never I never allow the cell phone to get in the way of that. And I think if we draw those boundaries and manage our technology and our social media, we can have really great personal relationships and we can do really well in our business or our careers or with the other part of our life that involves technology. But I think oftentimes we either don't or are afraid to, you know, manage our technology. And, and what I tell people is, you know, it, it's It's really interesting. They made these devices with off buttons, and you can actually turn them off, and it's really phenomenal when you do that. You know, it clears the air. The other thing I tell our friends and what we do is we take sabbaticals from technology. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but just turn the the thing off and leave it at home. Go somewhere for a day and just leave it. Don't take it. Uh, Go somewhere as a family, but don't take your technology. It just makes a big difference in how we communicate. Such good advice. Warren Rustand, author of the book, The Leader Within Us, and dad of a pro golfer. How cool is this? Go, Eric. Thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again.